background here of another Grey Goo replay. Spawning in the top side, we have Sardine. Spawning in the right side, which is now here, 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 we have Blue Drives Monster. Looks like a no early aggression from either side, but this is actually a bit of a problem. A Goo player thrives on lack of early aggression, however the human player does, well currently only has some 3 refining, while the Goo player has 6 mother Goos, which can pose a bit of a problem. As you notice, this map is actually quite wide open, which actually favors either faction that's not a Goo. However, there is a lot of room to maneuver and a lot of bases can be built by the Goo player, which still gives it gives them a quite a good advantage. As you can see here, we got a bit of a harassment for us, three Gladys and four Revolver. This mother Goo He might have seen the units going to this bush, he might have not. What does Blue Drives Monster think right now? Yeah, I think he did not. Know, he did know about that forest. He must have saw it creep into the bush, and now he's moving in the path. This uh, mother goo has still has quite a bit of health left, and that's a nice bit of a cleanup. We've got quite a number of striders and a couple of radiants for scouts. Radiants allow not a lot of people build them unless they do the stealth technique for them. Which dollars now? Who? Perhaps a bit of a psych out. He's building a couple radiants, expecting them to be stealth radiants. However, he's getting stealth. Oh no, that's sort of a bad psych out then. Due to the fact that then he'll then probably build some daggers for stealth detection, which still would detect the, the dwellers. So it's a bit of a bad uh, fake out. Human player currently building his fifth refinery, while the Goo player currently is on eight Mother Goo. Which I would say it may the Goo player may be a slightly ahead in economy, but their units is not not as effective on one v one scale as such as a human or a beater faction. So they do need the extra resources to build more and more units. We still have actually a good number of rate like four radiants is uh quite a bit. However, he could place some bushes and they have really good range if you if you look. Look at that sight range compared to say uh oh there's a couple of other radiants there. The mother goose sight radius is not as large. Versus a monitor, which is another scout. And where's it? As you can see, look at the range of a Gladys and self, well, in vision range. It's pretty small, so Radiance can get the heads up of, oh, unit there and not be seen. Nice uh, scout in the bush. He has plenty of vision. He can see what's coming through that area. Same thing through here. He can see everything that comes through this area. Only vision he doesn't see is the center. So he could have a standing force here, ready to engage anything that comes out. This is starting to go in f in the blue tribes monster's favor, and that's a lot of dwellers. Usually, dwellers only work in the first time you actually build them before they get self detection. One dweller could destroy this entire force. I think they are considered siege units. They have a huge explosion rate. It's a giant, gigantic landmines. He's splitting up his forest. Does he know there's dwellers? Boom. Oh, he killed, he lost, he used both of them. That's really sort of bad. He could have took them all out one. He has also two small proteins from them. Gets turns to striders, he may, oh look, sneaky sneaky. He needs to wait to stop moving. He probably should, nah, that was a bit bad. He probably should have done with this one. Now this one, he missed one, but that's still pretty good. Perhaps you should invest to them dwellers into a, uh, Detector Sentinel coming out. I don't think they can attach the structures. Can they? Yes, they can. Apparently, it takes two of them to take out conduit wires. 
both three of them actually, though they are significantly low on health. Take out the sniping, trying to take out the conduit wire because they can take that out before the anti heavy sentinel. Though they still have six armor and 300 health. Cancels that one and destroys that one. Perhaps the conduit wire is being nice and paired up. And this is where the goo player is starting to overwhelm. The human player is now contained in his base, which is a huge problem. After all, an RTS is whoever can attack and win is basically who wins, not by who can defend, who can attack. Though this anti-heavy sentinel is pretty nice, but was quite expensive for all this conduit wire. Now we're going to see, since his uh, dwellers are, are now being countered by detection, he's now going to bring in tanks. He's also got another one, perhaps we may see a bastion. Oh, I love myself a bastion, especially when my uh, my channel's profile is a bastion. Massive tank to basically taunt all nearby enemy units. We got a nice heavy armored force in the doorsteps. We have tanks and howitzers to counter, but the howitzers are not effective versus a heavily armored force. This howitzer is null and void, pretty much. Of course, it hits the only couple light units. Nice artillery deals massive damage over time to these units. Because it's a pool of damage, such as incendiary bombs. Not as a... Well, it looks like ba that Bastion got taken out quite quickly due to the fact that all these anti-heavy sentinels. But it served its purpose. It withstood that frontal assault quite nicely. <coughs> We got more and more destructors coming in. Perhaps we're going to see, yeah, we see destructor bounce upgrade coming in the next five minutes. We got a good amount of artillery on the front line dealing all this nice damage. All this conduit wire is now null and void because of its being cut off. We got reinforcements on the front line. This is a nice game, but a massive amount of artillery. I thought there was only two of them, but apparently there's six of them. We got even AA just in case if there's going to be some sites or Nimbus. Because apparently it only takes one Nimbus can, can use both its bombs to take out a Crescent. Because it deals 60 damage and the Crescent has 120 health. It's perfect math. Though he's, this artillery needs to get out of there. It currently has no really any use right now. Oh, apparently only t it takes. Well, the armor is quite effective against first crescents because it only does one damage per second. Then, because I think it's damage done one at a time. We got a. Uh, no, this artillery it hasn't really been dealt with. Sure, two of them. In yeah, he needs to get these two crests out, but their movement speed is pretty bad, so they probably won't. Throw the pools left behind because now heal your allies' units when staying in the pool. Does not appeal form a school. That's actually a pretty nice upgrade for him. Gives his units frontline. Well, basically, artillery also becomes medics. If that makes any sense, that would make no sense in what any other game except for this one. Artillery becomes medics. Got a good sized strider force here. I think he saw some Gladys. Yeah, he did see. There is two Gladys. It, they can do some damage, and they can also micro a mother, a uh, mother goo trying to defend itself. But this mother goo could just climb up this wall. Looks just recently formed to another mother goo. Small proteins, large proteins, mother, mother goose consumes unit structure bursts of energy that which heals nearby units. So it looks like he's going for a heavy medic type force. If that's the proper term. And this conduit wire still has not been rebuilt. Though this artillery anti heavy sentinel can be remain power without connection. So it's He's fine having that uh, powered up, but he can't teleport any units along 
the conduit wire without that being replaced. Currently, the Goo player has researched all available tech technology slots. Bounce, Crescent Steel Heal, Radiance can now target aircraft, and Dwellers now remain their stealth, which we are new, and the healing burst from from uh, small proteins, large proteins, mother goos from killing a unit. Nice AA placement. It will prevent seeing he can't see that even from even though his units could just look up, they can't see that. And we got artillery on the high ground. Like the Goo faction is very mobile, such as their artillery and the AA could just walk up walls. We got a good sized ground force by the human player. He should go and out and attack and deal some damage. Sitting back is not the way to win. Nice snipe on a mother goo. That is actually quite good. Though he still has 10 mother goos left. We got a counter attacking force here. A lot of stridents, they're not on attack move, they're on a move order. Now they're attacking. Destroy all those Gladys, lost one or two of them. And a nice. <laughs> repairs from the artillery. Got a good sized force, as stated before. Looks like he's going for a teleporter, which is a good way to strike back against a goo player. He can, perhaps he should build lancers, I would say, it'd be the best bet for him. Do we have any Lancer production? Looks like we do have some Scythe production. Looks like he's going to do Gladys teleporting. Which is a good way to teleport onto a Mother Goo. Hopefully he can catch it with its pants down with low health. And then kill it. Another, another harassment force of Fetch 3 Gladys. He moves away. Because the three Gladys can do quite a bit of damage. And we got a attacking force here while maintaining a defending force. Looks like he's just trying to do some harassment. This is a good uh, option. Since he knows, he does not know where their army is. So he is splitting up his army up. So he has to be ready to lose this entire force. Now the howitzers are actually coming to play due to the fact there's a bit more light units. We've got a good amount of destructors here. We've got a nice concave, though some of them are being funneled in. We've got a nice concave on the human player. His force is just being massacred. we got artillery being sent to the front line, which is a pretty bad idea. And that entire force was quite readily destroyed. And then the repair. Which is actually helping this destructor a little bit. It doesn't look like it doesn't heal much, but every bit counts. Got the uh, artillery, so the three armor is their damage. Their attacks only do about four damage each. Well, four damage per tick. And we got the overwhelm on that artillery, on that uh, anti heavy. Got another attacking force over here. Has he launched this uh, teleport or not yet? No, he has not. He's sending out probably, perhaps a scythe would be his. There's, there goes that aircraft. Perhaps we'll see a teleport here soon. Perhaps he could teleport here and get a nice flanking force. We got a nice concave on the human player. Bring these units to flank while this unit force takes the full damage. We got this artillery now when we cleaned up. This. The goo player is on maximum number of. Mother Goose. The human player still has only one, two, well, lost all those refineries, which there were three there, but is on seven or eight refineries, or was. This Mother Goose, full on health, it can be used as a combat unit due to the fact that it has uh, 1,300 out of six, 1,600. Perhaps we may see a uh, proto purger. Oh, looks like we got a teleport here. Teleport in here. Looks like he did lose one 
looks like only one Mother Goo one. I think this one's from here. Yeah, it is from there. So he lost one Mother Goo, but he instantly reformed her because he has spirit economy. Looks like he has a full health one ready, perhaps for a Proto Purger. Yeah, this one may become a Proto Purger. Got another snipe on a Mother Goo. That's very good. We got this uh, attacking force here. Bit uh, being outflanked and being surrounded, which is a bit bad. We got another attacking force here. The, now, the Goo player is on the defensive. Because all these constant waves of attack. And these attacks have been quite cost effectively. He's been taking out, so far, three Mother Goos with that teleport. We got another more Mother Goos being pulled out from the front line, not being left behind and forgotten. He's currently cleaning up so many of these Mother Goos. Currently, six Mother Goos have been gone down in the last couple minutes. It's, these are severe losses for the Goo player. One was tolerable to a point. He's also running low on resources on this set of catapult spends. Though these frontline ones, which are being proxied by the force of humans, force of, of the human player, he could expand over here. He could go back where he spawned for resources. He could go down here, but he's so content on the middle that it's starting to low on run, starting to low on resources. The human player is starting to refine the front line with his with his extractors. While he goes, he might build additional extractors. Yes, he has a boatload of extractors. This mother goose being focused down also. Currently, there's just too many attacks, too many engagements happening for a blue drives monster to, to uh, defend himself. Sardine is starting to run away in a macro game versus the Goo for versus a Goo player. Now we got another strike force here. We've got a strike force here. This is how you defeat. You don't ball up your unit. You engage against mother multiple mother Goos. Currently, he is down a lot of Mother Goos. The human player has more refineries than, a, than the Goo player. He actually ha has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 refineries. If he gets two more, he will have equal to the maximum number of Mother Goos possible. Any more than that, he has the economic advantage to go to permanently for the rest of the game. Which means he doesn't take out any extractors and refineries and all of that. Now we got. Mother Goose nicely camping on top of the hill, coming in for a nice sweep. He's cleaning up this attacking force quite nicely, but there's attacking force all across the map. Blue Jive's monster is overwhelmed. He cannot handle this many attacks. Losing way too many Mother Goose. The end of the game is nigh for him. He does have a small outstanding force, but they currently, instead of the Goo player with its overwhelming numbers, is now the human player with its overwhelming numbers. So all of this force is quite expendable. We probably have this uh, scythe going out for a scout, perhaps ready for another teleport. Gladys are ready for a teleport. He could teleport in here, destroy this artillery, then go for the destructors. He could teleport in around and get some more Mother Goose. All are very viable options. These frontline tractors are actually being attacked, which is a bit of a problem. He could teleport in, like I said, these, he could perhaps teleport into this bush. Quickly got a uh, better positioning to deal with this force. How's this teleporter still on cooldown? We got this. Apparently, he had another 3 3 extractors up here, I didn't see. N looks like there's another Mother Goo up here trying to refine. But he's gonna be overwhelmed by this attacking force. A nice uh, mixture of units of artillery, Gladys, and revolvers.
And now he's just down to, let's check out the Unisav. He's now down to two artillery, two tanks, and two striders, and some AA here and there. And Blue Drives Monster throws out the GG and throws in the towel very shortly because we can end the replay. Self mines are fun, but they require a lot of micro. True, and they weren't that effective. He wastes too many in one shot. Yep. This is Lord Ajon saying thank you for watching and signing off.